But I can say without a doubt, it is not as much of a mess as Redfall. Um, Cayman, you've been playing a, a bit more than me. I played about an hour right before here. I pulled together some some reviews. We, you know, we've kind of stopped doing review roundups on this show, but I think pulling together some reviews for this game is going to spark a bigger conversation before mm-hmm. we get into our Zelda rankings. So I want to turn it over to you and, and say, or ask rather, mm-hmm. what is your thought so far of Redfall? How long have you been playing? G- yeah. Give me everything you got. Yeah. So, okay. So first things first, I have probably put in between three and a half to four hours at this point. I've literally dedicated all free time I've had today, which is not very much to try to get mainly because the review score is so bad and so bad. People are very angry about this game. So I was like, look, this is a very topical thing. I will try to do my best to play as much as I can. And um, so that's how much time I've played. I think the fundamental problem here is this game is not good. This isn't a situation of like this game has really bad bugs and glitches and X, Y, Z. It does. Fun it fact, does. it fucking does. There was a moment I'm literally looking at a tree in front of me. The texture is there. And then the texture just went away. I've had I've, so much texture pop in, in this game. I've never okay, but that's not even texture pop in. That's like them removing the texture. <laughs> that's texture which, removal. <laughs> which which I've never seen ever have i ever seen shit like that where it's like a lot of times it's like oh it's not loading in so you walk into an area and shit looks janky and then the textures pop in you're like okay this was like i'm in an area and then the textures get removed yeah the problem is is even without the texture removal this game looks like it was made for the playstation 3 this game looks worse than the original dishonored like and it's such a shame because I like the artistic direction. I like yes. I, I like the I vibe the it it, mm-hmm. it it's bringing, but boy, it doesn't look great. And it's funny in terms of bugs. The biggest one I've had, granted, like I said, I've only played about an hour, but I finished the tutorial mission, and it's like, congratulations, like welcome to Redfall, blah blah blah. And there's this like thing on the right hand side of the screen that's like, go here to accept your first mission. And it's covering literally half the screen and it won't go away. Oh, oh and yeah. and I'm like, I'm running around like I'm pressing buttons. I'm like, OK, maybe it's just going to like I have to go through like a certain door or talk to somebody. It'll go away. Fifteen minutes later, it still has not gone away. And finally, I start holding like all of the buttons on the controller and a reticle for the B button pops up and it's like the spinning wheel. So it's like I, I was supposed to hold it. And so this could have gone away probably 15 minutes ago, but the display of the button wasn't showing. So I had no idea how to get rid of it until I just started randomly holding buttons. And it's like those little things are, they are already adding up and I've only been playing for an hour. Yeah. So what I can tell you is, is like, and I want to put like graphics aside. um, The game's not fun. Yeah. That's I'm not having a great time so far. That's the other problem. I've made it far enough in where I'm like, okay, I'm starting to do stuff and I'm like, I, I I don't even care. I don't care. It it doesn't even it, it bothers me that like the actual shooting mechanics feels better if you're no scoping everything. Like if you play it like an old school PC first person shooter like Doom, yeah. just no scope feels better than like actually aiming down the sights because especially when you're fighting vampires they're so fast. They're so fast. There's no reason to even use a scope. So the the thing is, is then all of a sudden you have to remove certain weapons from your your arsenal. Mm-hmm. They also give you some pretty game breaking g- guns right off the bat. Uh, the UV one is that one of them for so you? So I haven't gotten the UV gun yet, uh, but the stake launcher. Mm, well, like, I, I picked one up but i haven't used it yet yeah it pretty much will like one shot kill an enemy and you get a <laughs> lot of stakes and you're just like all right cool which is like fine like if you if you want to make the game like easier like that's cool because like and i and you kind of feel like they've baked in like knowing like oh man we fucked up yeah by putting these guns in because like playing on normal difficulty it's like two hits you're dead so it's like they're kind of like so they like artificially inflate the difficulty because they have guns that can break the game this badly like so early on in and it doesn't feel rewarding 
I've already also unlocked all of my abilities in the first three and a half hours. Really? Wow. Who, so which like, character are you playing as? So I'm playing as uh, Dev. Okay. Um, which is, you know, I, I like like his special powers are kind of cool. Uh, I don't I don't know if I'm if I if I even particularly enjoyed this particular character. I do want to try out some of the other ones, but like this character is, it, I mean. Being a, I like his traversal mechanic where you can like okay. throw a disc and like teleport. Oh, um, cool. And that can be kind of fun, but like I literally have only, I've not used that in combat. I've literally only used that mechanic to just move across the map faster. Interesting. The world is empty and dead. It is. Every, there's, there was one cutscene. I had one cutscene. Well, the cutscenes, they're, they're doing that thing that like, double a ps3 games would do where it's like a, a moving static image yeah i've only had, I'm like had why does this game like, take so long i've had like one one cut scene wow. that it wasn't a static image cut scene and it was me waking up after the first static image cut scene and i'm sitting here so the thing is is like i'm looking at this being like i'll give a lot of passes to certain games because i'm like this is like a double a game and like you give that a pass this isn't a double a game this has been pitched. It is being sold. That's the bigger issue. It's being sold as a AAA game. Now, if you have Game Pass, no big deal. But like, there's people out there who don't use Game Pass for whatever reason. They just will buy one game, and that's their thing they do, and that's totally fine. I think that's great. Yeah. And you're charging $70 for a game that is fundamentally broken. It is poor design. The, 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 when you mentioned the box thing mm -hmm. that popped up, Every time you do anything, you can be in the middle of combat. You just finished a mission in the middle of combat, and you have to hold B to get the menu to go away and then get killed in the middle of it because you can't do anything. You can't see anything. Right. Like, that's just bad game design. And, you know, we talked about where I think it was um, talking about Halo last week and was like, hey, like, you know, these developers know what they're doing. Here's the thing. This development team has a much better track record than 343 who made Halo. That's what's so bizarre to me about this is I feel like Arcane has never, in my experience, delivered less than like a 9 out of 10 game. We had Dishonored 1 and 2, Prey, and Dead uh, Deathloop uh, a couple years ago. Or last year, whatever. Two years ago? It doesn't matter. It's like they've their track record has been so clean. Mm -hmm. It's like how did this happen? I just, it's so baffling to me because at first I opened it up because, so I, I want to pull in in a second, um, Jessica Condit from Engadget, because I think she says a lot of, she puts things in, in, in a way that I think is, is really interesting uh, about this game, but this game, it at, at first seems to have that arcane look to it. That is usually so kind of, um, Icon, not iconic is not the word, but you look at an arcane arcane game and you can say, "Oh, that's an arcane game." Sure, yeah. in a good way, complimentary. Hundred percent. And so I, the, all these reviews are so. I mean, it's right now. It's it's Metacritic is a, is like a fifty eight or something. I haven't seen a, a review better than a six out of ten or or a three out of five. And so I'm expecting this game to not be great. And I immediately get into like, "Ooh, cool!" I I this I'm already getting arcane vibes. And then fifteen minutes in. You know, I'm I'm kind of finishing up the tutorial section, and I'm like, this just doesn't seem fun to me. It doesn't like Arcane is usually so good about a game feeling good as well as looking good. Deathloop, especially, like say what you will about the like idea of the game, and maybe that like kind of faux choice they give you doesn't work uh, for some people but it feels fucking good to play. Like it's sure. really smooth. Here's the thing. Um, I, I wasn't a fan of Deathloop, but Deathloop was, was fundamentally good. It was a great right. game. It just wasn't a game for me. Right. This is, and this is just, I don't think it's a game for anybody because I, even an I, hour I, in, I'm like, this game just doesn't seem like it has fun in it. I'm sitting here playing it and I'm like, I'm going to give it time. And I have seen people be like, it is more fun when you have people playing with you. But like, that's not what you should be doing. You shouldn't design a game that's like, it's more fun if you have people to play with. Like, no, that's not... Unless you market the game as, like, this is supposed to be a multiplayer game that you can play, play single player. It's not. 
in the way that they do multiplayer from what I was reading, I, and I, I'm hoping we get to try this out soon, the two of us. Yeah. There's no drop in, drop out. You have to log out. There's also no campaign progression for whoever the other person is. Yeah. So it's you, like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. So if I jumped into your game and we went past where I was in the story, like I get to replay all those missions again. Yeah. And the missions are pretty much just like, go here and look at this thing and pick this up and then yeah. come back. And it's like, and then, the, then I think the other thing too is, and this is coming from like the idea of like, this is an arcane game and it's sold as that, right? It's pitched as this is an arcane game. And it's like, you have options to be able to tackle whatever problem the way you, you see fit. That's kind of their whole MO, right? Right. The problem is the very first mission in the game that you get is that you have to infiltrate a firehouse and they're like, you can, and they tell you right off the bat, you can go through the front door and fight a bunch of enemies. You can go through, you can uh, lock pick your way into a back door or you can climb up and traverse up to the ceiling and then go down from the ceiling. So it's like, cool. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try out the ceiling method. So I go in, I have to kill two enemies and I stealth kill them. I'm like, awesome. And they're like, oh yeah, by the way, it's, this isn't a real spoil. It's the first mission in the game. They're like, you are you have to rescue survivors. And they're like, okay, we're not leaving here until you kill every single enemy. And go turn the power on. So it doesn't matter if you stealth your way through the ceiling and do as minimal damage yeah. as possible, which like Dishonored would be like, that's kind of the way we want you to do things. This game's like, they're like, no, 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 no. You you still have to kill them all. You just got here a different way than you would have. And honestly, <laughs> you wasted more time doing it this way because you're going to have to go back outside and kill all those people. You should just. So it's like, that's to me is just doesn't like that. It's diametrically opposed to what you're telling me sure. is the crux of what we're supposed to be here doing. Yeah. And it, Jessica from Engadget. Um, says right now Redfall makes sense as an early access game. It's a mess, but it's still largely playable. Its core loop is actually thrilling. I don't necessarily agree when all the mechanics line up correctly, but the details need attention. The early access process is a crucial tool for developers, especially when it comes to online experiences. And there are pipelines for works in progress on every major platform, including Xbox. Redfall feels like a work in progress. But in reality, Arcane and Xbox aren't pitching Redfall as an early access game. They're calling it a finished product and charging $70. And I think that's the real issue here, yeah. is that this game is not presenting as a finished game. Mm. There's so much already wrong with it. And it's like so many game-breaking bugs. I was reading about this thing earlier where... Um, there's like some mission where you need like a key to get in. And for a huge amount of players, the key just doesn't show up. You go into a co-op match and it does. But to your point, it only shows up if you're not the one hosting. So then they don't get credit for that. They would have to play the whole rest of the game in somebody else's game in co-op and not get the credit for it on their own game. So it's just, you it's a know, mess. You want to know my favorite game breaking bug I've had? It's hmm. not even a game breaking bug. It was a game progressing bug. So I'm outside of a safe house, the first safe house that you unlock in the game. Well, outside of the main hub of the fire station. I go to this house and I get attacked and immediately get killed. Like I just got like trounced by like two vampires. Just absolutely fucked up. It spawned me inside of the safe house. <laughs> so you, it just progressed you further in the mission. It just progressed me and being like, you unlock this safe house. I, like hilarious. literally on the death screen, it was like, you unlock a safe house trophy. And I was like, or er, achievement. And I was like, that's really funny. It's happened twice now. That's really funny. And I'm like, I don't like, I like, this doesn't phase me. Like if it would be like, now you can never get the safe house. That's a lot worse than what happened to me, but it is hysterical. And, yeah. you know, I think Patrick, we kind of talked a little bit about this before and it, I don't know, man. I, I just kind of feel like we were at a point now with Xbox that I have questions. I have been on this show very um, quick to defend Microsoft and, and try to kind of uh, 
put ease to a lot of your concerns about this acquisition and the way that kind of they've been going. It's been like, oh, it's just like they've made some mistakes, blah, blah, blah. But it's like at a certain point, you make enough missteps and that's just like your brand. Mm -hmm. at, like, And so I, I, I agree. Like I – Redfall was being advertised as like one of the tentpole releases of Xbox this year. And it was delayed multiple times. And now that it's out, it seems like it is an early access fucking thing that they're charging $70 for that I'm sure they're going to support. And I'm sure there will be a day where this game works better than it does. But that's just a really shady business tactic i think Here. or business practice let's do a quick opinion. let's do a quick role reversal a lot of times you're the one asking me questions let me ask you some questions patrick ask me some i want i want to i want to know your opinion so first with arcane being one of the most prestigious devs under xbox's umbrella how do you stomach losing years of their dev time to a game that launches in this state especially a game that doesn't look like it's going to be fun my hope is that Arcane has multiple teams and that this wasn't the Deathloop team or the Prey team or whatever, that this was a project. Let's say it was, it came down from the top. I don't know. Uh, but I'm hoping that this hasn't been their only focus. Uh, and I'm hoping that they're a big enough studio with enough teams that there is another uh, kind of more traditional Arcane game in the works that we're going to get. If not, then that's really disappointing that, this is all we're going to get from Arcane for a while. Who, at this point, when you compare PlayStation Studios to Xbox Studios, Arcane is one of those ones on the Xbox side that I think really adds some parity to the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, because I think it's safe to say most people would agree uh, it, PlayStation just has a lot more um, high-quality studios than Microsoft does. The acquisition of Bethesda helped even it a little bit. And if, if the Activ Activision... Um, buyout goes through as well like it'll definitely be even more kind of aligned but this is not good this is this is a, a huge step back i think for um the image of arcane it's it's giving me cyberpunk vibes for um cd project red all right got another one for you does game pass give legs to games that flop from a review standpoint due to it being bundled into subscription service such as game pass Yes, and I think there, if Starfield busts too, I mean, that'll be a whole different issue for Xbox, but I think Game Pass is starting to have an image issue in that it's good enough for Game Pass. Like, I, this is, as an Xbox owner who primarily prefers playing games on PlayStation, Xbox is just my Game Pass machine. And, mm. I've in the last 12 months, I have started and put down probably 30 games on Xbox and I have started and finished maybe five. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a really not a good trip. Like you're batting like 20%. That, I, that's quick math. That's probably very wrong that you could easily fix in the chat, but not a good track record. All right, got another one. Does Redfall's terrible reviews and consequential lack of sales help bolster Microsoft's claim that they need Activision to survive in this video game market? I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> Activision will bring in games that'll, like with Call of Duty and everything, like it, the one thing that Call of Duty does is work. Mm -hmm. and And with this... I don't know. I, I feel like Xbox needs some wins before they start. It start being a really bad um, kind of view of the horizon for them. I mean, there's Microsoft has so much money. They can lose a lot before it starts becoming a problem, but they're a business. And if they continually start losing money, then that's going to, things are going to start changing if that's the case. All right, here's the, here's another one. Considering the Bethesda games launch in buggy messes and Redfall is getting absolutely blasted for their technical shortcomings, do you think they'll delay Starfield to avoid launching or to avoid essentially taking in the ire of both reviewers and customers? Here's what I think. Mm -hmm. I think 
if because it's it's supposed to come out in September, I believe. Its most recent delay was to September. So I was reading. Uh, it's supposed to be an October November release now. Oh, we don't actually have a date for Starfield. Mm-hmm. I thought we did. But have the a date. the no the rumor around town is October November. Okay, if we don't, if it's like a few months out, and there is any chance that it is this bad that it's Redfall bad, I think they will delay it again. Mm-hmm. I think if it's Jedi Survivor bad, but has the quality behind it like Jedi Survivor does, I don't think they'll delay it again. I think it'll be disappointing that they that it's buggy, but if the bugs, to your point earlier about Jedi Survivor, if the heart of the game is still fucking good and they know it's good, then I think they'll still launch it. Because here's the thing, like a company like Xbox is has been doing this for a long time. Xbox knew Redfall wasn't going to be good. Like, but it's the, it's one of those things for Redfall to come out now and it'd be like this, they knew. Mm-hmm. Arcane knew. Like they're they're all really smart people. They're smart enough to make a fucking video game like this big. They know what they have. It's probably very disappointing for them. It's probably very hard for them to listen to and read reviews of people just tearing it apart. That probably sucks for them, but they know it's not good. Like, there's no way that they are kind of thinking like, man, we fucking did it. What do they mean this game sucks? Like, there's, they're smarter than that. And so I think it'll ultimately come down to, is the game actually good? And and they're able to, I think, identify that. And so long-winded way of saying, if it's still fucking good, then no. they. I don't think they'll delay it again. But if if the bugs will impact it that much, I do think it'll be delayed again. And maybe it's, it comes out next year. I have one last question. This is the biggest question. This is a, this is a tough pill to swallow. I think for a lot of people at the moment. Okay. If the Xbox Activision deal goes through, can we even trust that the games released aren't going to be rushed and broken disasters until they prove us otherwise? No, I think until, because if you go back to all of the games that Xbox has released over the past couple of years, Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment are the only two that come to mind immediately as launching successfully and like without some sort of negative storyline attached mm-hmm. to it. And though one was a, a shadow drop and the other one was an, like a really small indie type title. They have not launched a super successful AAA game in a long time. And so I think until they do it, I think it's totally fair for that to be the assumption because that's been the norm now for a minute. Yeah, I think, and it's something that we discussed off air. I had this analogy that basically was just like, it's like having the best sub shop that like runs, like you got the best subs that are inside of like, your city and then subway shows up and it's like our sales are declining our subs suck we are going to now buy this chain of really good subs and then we're going to start selling our subs in there too yeah and it's like why would you why would you want that like why would you want some like something that's struggling because like and and i guess then the question becomes because i i don't think we look at all this stuff, right? I don't think you can say Microsoft struggles to make games because their developers struggle because they're not as good as Sony or Nintendo. That is a categorical lie. Sure. It's just, this is a great example. I think Redfall is a great example of like, we all know Deathloop was a game of the year contender. Dishonored a lot of times was in, you know, the top of the list of people's For top sure. games. Pray another one. All of their games have been at the very top of the list. Then we come back. We look at what we've got with this game, and it's like, it's the first game that's been released exclusively under the eye of Microsoft. Right. From Bethesda. From Bethesda. So why is that the case? Why why is this game this bad of in this bad of shape? Like, why is that? Is yeah. it because this game was supposed to be dishonored and then Microsoft came in and said, no, this needs to be a games as a service. And then they had to just completely change the way that this game works and it doesn't work. Yeah, I, I'm i super interested to see. I mean, it's not going to be from Waypoint, unfortunately, because Vice just announced they're laying off that entire team. But I'm hoping that 
someone like a Jason Shire at Bloomberg, some an investigative journalist in the games space. I hope that they can get to the bottom of this. And like, I feel like there is a story out there. I feel like there is um, some, like what went wrong with Redfall, I feel like is going to be a, like a, a think piece and like a, an investigative uh, fucking like, story that someone's going to release at some point because there's i feel like there is something here that we don't know as consumers uh which uh, saying it like that makes me feel like i have a fucking tin hat on uh, or tinfoil hat on but i just for them to have such a clean and celebrated track record and then to do this it's just it's something that doesn't add up it's really strange so but you know maybe i mean people people well, misstep but i mean here's the thing look at the last two and we, if we don't include Pentiment or don't include Hi-Fi Rush because those games are very different than... Much what, smaller scale. Yeah, much smaller scale, more akin to AA or Indie. So the last two big games that were released now have been Redfall and Halo Infinite. Halo and in I just remembered Plague Tale, but that came out on other platforms too, mm -hmm. didn't it? Yeah, it came out on another one, yeah. So... That's I, that's not included in this list. So yeah. the last two would be Halo Infinite and Redfall. Redfall is a feels like a rushed and just half it's just a shittily put together games as a service game to try to catch whatever they can off of it. And Halo Infinite plays like Far Cry in space. With a bunch like its own there's so many issues with that game too. That, yeah. Yeah. And so I'm sitting here. I, and I do. I'm, I'm sitting here, and I'm just thinking, like, I think this. A lot of this might be that it. And this is tinfoil hat too. Might be coming down from the top. Maybe, maybe. I, I I'm so interested to see now what happens with Starfield because if that ends up shitting the bed too, I don't know. We're gonna be having a, a lot different of a conversation. No. Oh, um, no. Speaking of conversation, the chat's been popping off. We got John in the chat. John, John, I feel like you've not been here for weeks. I've missed you. I feel I feel safe again to see you in the chat. We also got Babylon Drifter. Uh, when we were talking about Jedi Survivor, we got Jedi Survivor the other day, but now I'm obsessed with Power Wash Simulator. So I haven't even played Jedi Survivor yet. What do you think about Power Wash? It's fucking good, right? It's fucking amazing. It's one of the greatest games ever made, I think. It's great. It's great. Um, and then, yeah, we're, we're talking... Um, John and, and Babylon are, are chatting in the uh, they're chatting in the chat about crowdfunding, early access, all that stuff. Great conversation happening. Uh, thanks for being here, folks.